My name is Bryony October and I'm front of house engineer for my dear friend Katie Mellow here. Yeah, we've been working together for something like six years now. And um, for those that might not know, front of house engineer has essentially the most important job, uh, you know, outside of the musicians on stage. Uh, Bryony's job is to basically mix the sound for the audience. So like all those huge speakers that you might see get mixed, um, you know, by the front of house engineer. and. Uh, we've got the absolute best in this woman. I was looking for a, a really great front of house engineer um, and Dom Monks, who is a phenomenal producer himself, you know, has made some stunning records over the years. Uh, he was working on a record I was working on and I called him up and he recommended Bryony. Um, I wasn't looking for a female front of house engineer. Um, you know, and the reason why I mention it is that, you know, the crew space is a very male-dominated space. Uh, so, yeah, when Bryony showed up, really within a few shows, it was very clear that we had a very sort of similar sort of desire for absolute excellence, um, you know, and a kind of real excitement for the, for the gear and the equipment in, you know, amplifying what it is you do on stage. Dom phoned me actually and uh, asked me if I'd be interested in being recommended to go forward as Katie's uh, front of house engineer um, because he said that she'd, um, she'd asked him and he said he was nowhere near good enough but the person he was looking for was me which I was you know, very, very uh, honoured to be you know, re recommended by somebody who's also so talented. It was a real gift to come to Katie's music because it's, it is a place where you can find you know, perfection in sound. A lot of live sound engineering is, for want of a better phrase, damage and imitation, because you're dealing with a loud stage and lots of, you know, noisy instruments and you're trying to pick out a mixer from that. So to deal with something that's so pristine from the source is just, you know, it's, it's an absolute joy to just to turn up, basically. I think it's also, if I may, it's not um, just about the source. I think it's also about, from our perspective as, you know, I guess me as the artist and the musicians, you know, we really respect the equipment. You know, I still find it miraculous that mics can do what they do and, and the desks can do what they do. So we would do things like, um, you know, there was one big tour that we did where, you know, I would come out after every sound check and have a listen to the recordings and how it sounded in that space. Yeah, Katie allowed me to bring an analogue console out on a big tour we did with a 16-piece uh, Georgian women's choir, and I had, you know, been my kind of lifetime's ambition to do a headline tour with a full analog setup. Given that when I was um, a young sound engineer doing the support acts on bigger tours, when it was all when it was all analog, I'd end up on the last kind of five or six channels of a desk and have to get on with it. So by the time I got to a point where I was mixing headline acts, it had all gone digital, and there was none of that analog, you know, delight to kind of have a real proper play with. So I was able to take out an um, Midas H3000 console and all of the outboard that I would wish for which was absolutely you know, phenomenal to do. It was like having, it was like being in a toy shop basically when I got the day when I got to go and choose everything I was going to use. And then the resulting sound from that was just sublime. It was such a joy to, to go home onto analog. I, I felt every day like I was back home mixing because there was none of the kind of like computer related problems you get with digital consoles. It was just, it was just all there in front of me and really you know, it was fun and it sounded amazing. I'd say it's absolutely essential to have someone at the front of house role who completely understands what it is you're trying to do, how it is you're trying to get the sound to come across and how, you, how it is you want the energy of the songs to come across. Um, it's essential uh, because, you know, I mean, you could be making the greatest magic on stage, but if that magic isn't being converted through the speakers, and the however many thousand people aren't hearing it, you know, there's no point. Um, so it's, yeah, it's essential that we really work very closely together to kind of just keep tweaking and honing and just, you know, really make sure that it's absolutely great quality.
I think it's it's fantastic to have a really good relationship and an ongoing relationship because there's you know there's huge trust then you know you know that you can take risks or you can do things that um, you know you don't have to kind of keep going back and going is this okay is this okay and you know it's like, it means that you're when you're out there in the audience and you feel something you can you can run with it and you know and you know, mix Katie and all of the band you know. Like, if I, if I have a, a kind of a problem or feel like something could be improved, I don't feel shy or, or worried about saying, you know, I think you should try and do it slightly different for the benefit of the, of the live stage sound, not necessarily opposed to your kind of musical opinion on it. And, and I, you know, I, have a, I do have a good relationship with all the band in that respect, that I can say those kind of things mm. to them and not fear, you know, that, that it's going to kind of put someone's nose out of joint because there's a mutual trust situation happening. Yeah, that's really important, actually. We definitely are... You know, we, we want honest feedback from from Bryony because uh, actually she's the only one that's hearing the show the way the audience is. So in sound checks, we really kind of go and they'll go after that. Yeah, and I, and I make a I make a big point, you know, about about making sure that the source the source is right because that can be the downfall of a lot of things. And you know, you you, you do sometimes rub it the wrong way with musicians because the way they're doing it doesn't translate in a live situation and you have to you have to go, no, I'm I know what I'm talking about here and I and I need you to change the way you're doing this in order to make that happen. And we we don't we, we just don't have that kind of friction in this band. It's mm. it, it's it's always been a really, you know, we'll try it if in the end then someone will come out and have a listen and it'll just be like a, a very mutual kind of a mutual appreciation and a mutual trust situation. Most of the time, you know, as an artist, you, you kind of just get handed a microphone. You know, you don't, I mean, I, I'd never, I've been making records since I was 19, so I'd never sort of really geeked out about the exact kind of types of microphones. But, you know, when you have an engineer who you trust, you know, essentially you, you make that decision. Um, and so far, it's been pretty, pretty great. Yeah, so I've had a long-standing relationship with Shaw and they approached me and asked me if I would be interested in trying out a brand new prototype microphone that didn't even have a name yet. Um, it wasn't even, it didn't even have its own housing, it was housed in a KSM9 um, shape basically. So um, we were given this mic and I was going out and doing a series of summer concerts with Katie and we I think I don't even know if we. I think we. I think we were using the existing microphone, and then we basically decided we would give it a little shot on like the last hour of the last day before, you know, because you've never got really got time to start experimenting with stuff in rehearsals because it's always a kind of like t tight time constraints. And I was like, look, we really should give this a go just so I can say I've tried it, and then um, maybe then try it in context in a couple of sound checks once we've got the shows up and running. And I remember we tried it, and the three of us, Katie, me, and um, our monitor engineer, Nigel, were instantly like, ooh, that's nice. And therefore, we then, we then decided we were going to go for it straight away and use it for the first show, which is kind of risky, really, you know, putting it into a completely different context of an outdoor show. And, but we sound checked it. And again, it just it just seemed to get better and better. Even in you know in the in the in the uncontrolled environment of an outdoor show, we had this microphone, and it was I've never I've never known an artist to react to a microphone like that because normally, like Katie was saying, they they they'll sing to whatever whatever you give to them based on they trust you, and you know that's a mic is a mic. But you were particularly enamoured by it straight away, yeah. weren't you? It was like the clarity of it and a sort of a uh, the realness to it, which was really beautiful. Um, also, I remember at the same time we had worked really hard to get the monitoring right, and you know and that's thanks to Nigel, who's on monitors. Um, so with that, you can really hear the differences, you know, of, of different microphones. Um, so yeah, it really did make a huge difference. My my usual philosophy with live concerts is to you know take the low risk option because there's so many variables. You need to keep as many things consistent as you possibly can. But I, I just had we, we, we had such a positive response to the to the sound of it in rehearsals. We just thought we would go for it basically, and, and so we used it straight away. I think particularly the thing that stood out for me with it was you know with a lot of 
high-end condenser mics, there's always an element of, to get the breathiness, you get a lot of high-end kind of fizzle in it as well. And that just, that, that doesn't exist on this microphone. You can layer it with effects and you still haven't got that kind of like hissing, not in hiss, but that, that high-end noise at the top end. I think you want it to be as invisible as possible, don't you? You kind of don't want it to feel like it's, it's adding anything at all. It's completely transparent. And then the other factor is with, you know, with high-end condenser microphones is that when you're putting it onto a live stage in front of you know, a drum kit, you, you're always that risk factor of you know, it, it being far too much spill. And we, didn't, we just didn't have a problem with that as well, which has also made it you know, really wonderful to use. Shaw have always been incredibly supportive of me as an engineer. I've, I've, I know I've, I've felt I've had you know relationships with various members of their team over the years. Had people have come and gone, and or they've all, but they've always consistently maintained, you know, off, offering me new microphones, offering me to try different things they're using, um, promoting me, you know, within, in their in their own publicity and stuff like that. So it's, it's they've always been, you know, it's, it's been a really good relationship, and you know, I, I really appreciate their support. We are um, about to go on a tour and um, I'm just so excited about it. I mean, we had a, a tour booked in Germany last summer, which had to be all postponed, so we're finally making it, making it happen. Yeah, so we're at SW19 Rehearsal Space in, in Wimbledon in London. Um, we're in their lovely, their, their nice biggest room, which is joy because there's windows and it's you know, plenty of space to do stuff. It sounds great in here, so it's good to get, it's good to get ready somewhere like this. It's like being a kid and doing it, uh, or doing it for the first time. It's just so exciting. I mean, a lot has happened in the last few years. Bryony's had a baby, um, which was actually initially something we really bonded over because we were both struggling with like, when do we have kids? And how can you do it when, you know, the, the job is so fantastic and it kind of has you hooked for many, many years. Um, so yeah, we kind of, you know, we really bonded over that. Uh, Bryony's had hers, I'm currently pregnant, and, um, and now we're about to hit the road, so yeah, no, yeah it feels I'll, very special. I'll be bringing my toddler on the road with us as well, which is another amazing part of the relationship I have with Katie, that, you know, and for a lot of artists, I wouldn't be able to work for them anymore because I just wouldn't be able to bring my child with me. But he's so young at the moment, it's impossible for me to leave him at home, so I have to be able to work with people who are happy for me to bring him and my mum, who looks after him for me on the tour. So we have a you know, unique situation there that I've been able to continue to work as a live sound engineer despite being a relatively new mother. It's, uh, it's going to be a new, a new way of touring for us, I guess, but um, fun, definitely fun times. Yeah, I mean, we just have to make it work because, you know, it's, if we as women want to stay in the industry and keep playing live, then, um, yeah, got to gotta make it, make it work. I think part of Katie and my relationship is, you know, we're, we're quite similar age and we've got quite similar life experience in that we've both been touring since we were very, very young, obviously in a slightly different way, um, me as crew and her as an artist, but, you know, we've, we've we spent all of our 20s and most, the vast majority of our 30s on the road, on tour, almost all of the time, and that did, you know, that did pose the dilemma of how, you know, what do you do about having children? Because it doesn't, it's not really a conducive environment to having a normal domestic situation. So I think we, you know, we bonded both over our, our life experience of being on the road a lot, and also this, this huge dilemma we both faced about, about becoming mothers and getting later and later into our 30s and wondering if, what the right thing to do was. I think to most acts and artists out there, the idea of bringing children along is totally preposterous and something they wouldn't even begin to consider. I think that I'm, you know, I'm particularly lucky I work for Katie and I work for several other female artists that recognise that this, is, this has to adapt. But the problem is, is that the industry, crew, from a crew perspective, is still so m you know, massively male dominated that other than the odd couple of people like maybe me, I don't, I don't know anyone else who actually brings their children with them who's on the crew. I think there's, there's more artists that are obviously able to do it because they can call the shops, but I think it's a bit of a chicken and egg. You, you, you know, you've got to have more women doing it at a high level to, to, to be able to, you know, to, to, to try and drive the change, but you're not going to get women doing it at a high level if there's a complete barrier as soon as they have a child, which is what it kind of feels like. I mean, I just feel, I do feel exceptionally lucky that there's, an appetite amongst the artists I work for to make it work, basically. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is, you know, we did have some interesting conversations, you know, and, and we spoke to the entire team and we were like, okay, this is the plan and this is how we want to do it. And we just want to be future facing and we want to we wanna be inclusive. And, you know, when you have a phenomenal team member like Bryony, who's technically like excellent, um, you know, if she comes with a baby, she comes with a baby. I've uh, just released a record with an artist called Simon Goff uh, and uh, I'm so proud of it. The, it's, the album is called Aerial Objects. Um, so yeah, that's out, just come out and um, you know, we'll, we're going to play a few songs um, from that record in this live set and also a couple of new songs from you know, my own studio album which I'm working on at the same time. So I'll be listening to some mixes when we, uh, when we hit the road. <laughs> Probably early next year is when the new studio record will be out. It's about